Do you have trouble with taste? My thoughts are often not tasty. No, mine. No effective barriers. Oh, I build forts. Associations come quickly. So do forts. So did we ever tell you the story of how these guys met? You certainly were a worthy adversary. Or maybe something with the words mutual respect in it. No. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 unlikely friendships in TV. Where's Oscar now? He said he had to make a phone call. He makes a phone call after every course. <laughs> well, at least he won't get lost. He leaves a trail of food. For this list, we'll be counting down all of the best friends on television that appear to be polar opposites, but somehow manage to get along anyway. And you should be thanking me every morning when you wake up, along with Jesus, for giving you another day. Come on. Number 10, Will Graham and Hannibal Lecter, Hannibal. The finest china used for only special guests. <laughs> Toxic relationships can really do a number on an individual's mental state, and befriending a homicidal sociopath is as toxic as it gets. Do you believe you could change me the way I've changed you? I already did. Will Graham is a former FBI agent who needs to undergo a psych evaluation, and Hannibal Lecter is just the kind of doctor to get the job done. Not fond of eye contact, I am. Now, eyes are distracting. You see too much, you don't see enough, and, and it's hard to focus when you're thinking, um, oh, those whites are really white, or he must have hepatitis, or oh, is that a burst vein? However, after recognizing the criminal profiler's innate ability to interpret evidence, Lecter decides to enlist himself into the agency's investigation in order to get closer to Will. You feel like I have dragged you into my world. I got here on my own. But I appreciate the company. What begins as a battle of wits and manipulation evolves to see the two realize that they may very well be the only ones who truly understand each other. Both of us are too curious about too many things for any ideals. Number nine, Quark and Odo, Star Trek Deep Space Nine. It's Saturday's the anniversary of your first date. Yes, but our first date ended badly. It's not something I want to commemorate, so I've decided to celebrate the anniversary of our first kiss. Your first kiss? Romantic, isn't it? Intergalactic space travel puts you in close proximity to a colorful cast of species, to say the least. What do you hate? You? Well, that's fine with me. Because I hate you, too. You're nothing but a petty thief. You're an arrogant brute. Quark and Odo live on the space station Deep Space Nine, and due to their conflicting backgrounds, have been at each other's throats from day one. So, I'd appreciate your not spreading wild theories about casually. Odo, being the security chief of the station, came into the relationship with suspicions of Quark's intent, and initially felt that he threatened the crew's integrity. Yet ultimately, they're not only able to transcend their issues, they come to realize they're not so different after all. Don't take it hard, Quark. Hard? <laughs> what are you talking about? That man loves me. Number eight. Felix Unger and Oscar Madison, The Odd Couple. Felix, do me a favor. Don't commit suicide while I'm gone. Save some for me. You never really know a guy until you live under the same roof. These two friends initially think it would be a wonderful idea to move in together when one of them suffers a tumultuous period in his marriage. Remember, you're dealing with a compulsive nut who can oh. rock it any minute. <laughs> Look at this. in the morning even when people are watching television. But within the first few days of moving in, Oscar, a disoriented sports writer, and Felix, a high-strung news writer who may potentially suffer from OCD, soon find out more about each other than they bargain for. Felix, what are you doing? There are ashes working their way into the nap of the carpet. Whether or not either wants to believe it, the two are both highly dysfunctional on their own and require each other to stay in check. I'm gonna catch a movie, okay? I don't have a cold, I'm sorry. Oscar, button your coat. Number seven, Connor McKnight, Kira Ford, and Ethan James, Power Rangers Dino Thunder. Dino Thunder, Power Rangers!
Earth-threatening forces might just be what this team needs to put aside their differences. The three of you have detention for one week, starting today. Now, if there are no further questions... Why do I have computers? I didn't think so. After reluctantly meeting in detention, these three students each stumble upon a dino gem, infusing them all with dinosauric abilities and allowing them to become Power Rangers. How much do I love detention? <laughs> Having only just met Connor, the school's jock, Ethan, a computer nerd, and Kira, a punk rocker, must cast away their preconceived notions about one another and learn to function as a team. Z-Rex Blaster, ready, fire! Over time, the three are seen not only conversing as rangers, but also as good friends. But isn't there a rule that says newbie rangers have to wash all the zords? Hey, I forgot about that rule. <laughs> Number six, Leslie Nope and Ron Swanson, Parks and Recreation. What's it like to stare into the eye of Satan's butthole? She's changed, Ron. She's a different person. If you can't trust your coworkers to have your back, who can you trust? Somebody shot me in the head! <sighs> As natives of Pawnee, Indiana, Ron and Leslie have an immeasurable passion for the work they do in the town's Parks and Recreation Department, despite their conflicting visions. I am really good at hunting, and I'm even better at being one of the guys. Well, it's a work event, so legally I can't stop you. Yes! Due to both of the employees' temperamental behaviors, agreeing to disagree is hardly ever an option. But it's through their differences that they become so invested in each other. I'm Ron Swanson, and you're Leslie <laughs> Nope. You with me? The two manage to prove that no matter how tense things get in the office, it's nothing a good apology and hug can't fix. Ron, I am so sorry. I should have been a better friend to you. Honestly, Leslie, it's fine. It was a punctuation mark on a sentence that had already been written. Number five. Don Draper and Peggy Olson, Mad Men. I want you to know that the day you saw something in me, my whole life changed. Peggy starts off the series as a young, wide-eyed secretary working at Sterling Cooper. Don Draper takes her under his wing and is there to defend her when the situation calls for it. I saw my father die too. Just kicked by a horse. <laughs> You're kidding. We watch their strictly platonic relationship evolve throughout the show's seven seasons, as Don encourages her to get into copywriting, and she eventually becomes his second in command. So now I'm supposed to feel like crap. Oh, I'm so sick that I ruined her birthday. Do you know when my birthday is? I was your secretary. Although their relationship hits the skids when Peggy goes off to work for another company, the impact of their friendship is already clear. As Peggy struts out of the building with her sunglasses on and boxes in hand in the series finale, it's clear she's not the same woman who was brushed off as the new girl when she started. And we have the influence of Dawn and the impact of their friendship to thank for that. Go home, shower, and come back and give me 10 taglines. Number four, Londo Malari and Jakar, Babylon 5. It would appear that we are on our own. Have you ever become friends with your worst enemy only to forget why you even hated them in the first place? There, you see. No, just these two intergalactic diplomats? Londo Malari, the ambassador of the Centauri Republic, and Jakar, the ambassador of Narn, shared an undying hatred for each other that stems from a political conflict on Jakar's homeworld many years ago. I didn't invade Narn! I didn't bomb our world with asteroids! Level our cities! It isn't until the two confront each other face to face that they realize their similarities and refuse to let the past transgressions of their ancestors dictate their relationship. My people can never forgive your people. But I can forgive you. Number three, Jamie Lannister and Brienne of Tarth, Game of Thrones. It was unworthy, forgive me. Protected me better than most. And she mocked me. Unapologizing. If there's one thing these two can relate to, it's being wrongfully judged. Although, ironically, they wrongfully judge each other at their initial meeting. Where did you find this beast? She is a truer knight than you will ever be. Jamie sees a female knight as a joke, 
and his reputation as the Dishonorable Knight precedes him. Needless to say, the two don't get along. However, in an ill-advised move, Catelyn Stark charges the Lady of Tarth with delivering Jaime to King's Landing in one piece. Well, she tries at least. While at first they're unable to tolerate one another, the two soon find common ground by not only saving each other's lives, but also by realizing how misunderstood and burdened they really are. Number 2. Dean Winchester and Benny, Supernatural Keep your nose clean, Benny, you hear me? Till death do these guys part, and then some. Really have to do that? I mean, right now. <laughs> I'm sorry, brother. I'm better, but I'm still on the man. After having both their souls doomed to the hellish purgatory dimension, these two become quickly acquainted when they hatch a plan to bring themselves back to the realm of the living. So you just want to guide me out of purgatory out of the goodness of your undead heart? More or less. What's in it for you? I'm hopping a ride. Dean, being born into a family of hunters, is technically a sworn enemy of the vampire Benny. But after extended time fighting alongside each other, their conflicting backgrounds soon become meaningless. A lot of trust in you, brother. You earned it. Benny's bloodlust makes it difficult for him to adjust to life on Earth, but Dean dedicates himself to making sure others see his virtues. I owe you. You don't owe me nothing. Truth is, uh... I could use a break from all this. Before we unveil our pick for top unlikely friendship on TV, here are some honorable mentions. On my desk, there's a number. I want you to send a text. You've brought me here to send a text. Text, yes, the number on my desk. If Steve needs power, I'll rig the school election and make him student body president. Wow, can you do that? Rigging elections is my bread and butter, Roger. He listens to you. Well, he also listens to the bare naked ladies. Go get their dumb asses to help you. <gasps> whoa, 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 back whoa. it up. Okay, Jeff, you are clearly in a bad space today, but Pierce is our friend and the bare naked ladies are triple platinum. Look, I'm not saying you're my idea of the perfect roommate. That'd be Prince Charles. <laughs> Well, you don't win any popularity contests with me, neither. Number one, Stewie and Brian Griffin, Family Guy. Mmm, that's good OJ. <laughs> ah! Yeah, that hurt? Ah! That hurt? What the hell? Yeah, it ah! feels so good, does it? Ah! Best friends aren't always measured by how often they say they care for you. Sometimes you can tell someone's your bestie by how much torment and abuse they put you through. When's the beating gonna come, Brian? Just tell me when it's gonna come. Just do something, anything. Given their positions in the household, Stewie and Brian are primarily the only ones who listen to each other. This allows them to understand each other on an intimate level. But more than that, it allows them to exploit each other's worst tendencies. You left out the part where I made you smash your head on the windshield. Well, I, I, I don't recall. <laughs> yes, well. I suppose I walked right into that one. Despite all the bickering and snide remarks, these two still choose each other as a partner if ever they want to discuss girl problems, stop a global catastrophe, or even travel through time. Even stepping on a mosquito could create a chain reaction that drastically alters the present. Really? Nah, you can do whatever you want. Come on! Do you agree with our list? By the seven new gods and the old gods beyond counting, I swear it. Which unlikely TV friendship did we miss? For more awesome top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Lecture, freak, fraud, fascist, failure.